So we're 122 meters underground now. Okay. So when Googling what to do in Bogota in Colombia, the Cathedral de Sal comes up a lot. So it's a salt cathedral about an hour outside of the city, 600 feet underground, about 200 meters underground. Within it is different carvings into the actual structure, crosses and depictions of the end of Christ's life on earth. So if you are a Spanish speaker, you can go with the guide and he'll um, talk his way through it. <laughs> Otherwise, if you speak any other language, there'll give you this little device which you push a button at each of the stations and it will give you a rundown of what the station is about. It was now two days before Passover and the festival of unleavened bread. The leading priests and teachers of religious law were still looking for an opportunity to capture Jesus secretly and kill him. Then Judas Iscariot, one of the twelve disciples, went to the leading priest to arrange to betray Jesus to them. That night after supper, Jesus and his disciples went to an olive grove called Gethsemane. And Jesus says, sit here while I go and pray. He took Peter, John, and James with him, and he became deeply troubled and distressed. He told them, my soul is crushed with grief to the point of death. Stay here and keep watch with me. He went on a little further and fell to the ground. He prayed that if it were possible, the awful hour awaiting him might pass him by. Abba, Father, he cried out, Everything is possible for you. Please take this cup of suffering away from me. Yet I want your will to be done, not mine. Then he returned and found the disciples asleep. He said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Couldn't you watch with me even one hour? Keep watch and pray so that you will not give into temptation. For the spirit is willing, but the body is weak. When he returned to them a third time, he said, Go ahead and sleep, have your rest. But no, the time has come. The Son of Man is betrayed into the hand of sinners. Up, let's be going. Look, my betrayer is near. And immediately, even as Jesus said this, Judas, one of the twelve disciples, arrived with a crowd of men armed with swords and clubs. Then the others grabbed Jesus and arrested him. They took Jesus to the high priest's home, where the leading priests, elders, and teachers of religious law gathered. Inside, the leading priest's entire high council were trying to find evidence against Jesus so they could put him to death, but they couldn't find any. Then the high priest stood up before the others and asked Jesus, Aren't you going to answer these charges? What do you have to say for yourself? But Jesus was silent and made no reply. Then the high priest asked him, Are you the Messiah, the Son of the Blessed One? And Jesus said, I am. And you will see the Son of Man seated in the place of power at God's right hand and coming on the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his clothing to show his horror and said, Why do we need another witness? You have all heard this blasphemy. What is your verdict? Guilty, they all cried. He deserves to die. Then some of them began to spit at him. They blindfolded him and beat him. Prophesied to us, they jeered. And the guards slapped him as they took him away. Very early in the morning, the leading priests, the elders, the teachers of the religious law, the entire high council met to discuss the next step. They bound Jesus, led him away, and took him to Pilate, the Roman governor. Pilate asked Jesus, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus replied, You have said it. Then the leading priest kept accusing him of many crimes, and Pilate asked him, Aren't you going to answer them? What about all these charges they are bringing against you? But Jesus said nothing. The crowd went to Pilate and asked him to release a prisoner as usual. Would you like me to release to you this king of the Jews, Pilate asked. But at this point, the leading priest had stirred up the crowd to demand the release of Barabbas instead of Jesus. Pilate asked him, Then what should I do with this man that you call the king of the Jews? 
and they shouted back, Crucify him! Why? Pilate demanded. What crime has he committed? But the crowd roared even louder, Crucify him! So to pacify the crowd, Pilate released Barabbas to them, and he ordered Jesus flogged with a lead-tipped whip, and then turned him over to the Roman soldiers to be crucified. The soldiers took Jesus into the courtyard of the governor's headquarters and called out the entire regiment. They dressed him in a purple robe, they wove thorn branches into a crown and put it on his head. Then they saluted him and taunted, Hail, King of the Jews! They struck him on the head with a reed stick, spit on him and dropped to their knees in mock worship. When they were finally tired of mocking him, they tore off the purple robe and put his own clothes on him again. Then they led him away to be crucified. Then the soldiers nailed him to the cross. They divided his clothes and threw dice to decide who would get each piece. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. A sign was fastened to the cross, announcing the charge against him. It read, The King of the Jews. Two revolutionaries were crucified with him, one on his right and one on his left. The people passing by shouted abuse, shaking their heads in mockery. Ha! Look at you now! They yelled at him. You said you were going to destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days. Well then, save yourself and come down from the cross. The leading priests and teachers of religious law also mocked Jesus. He saved others, they scoffed, but he can't save himself. Let this Messiah, the King of Israel, come down from his cross so we can see it and believe him. At noon, darkness fell across the whole land until three o'clock. Then at three o'clock, Jesus called out with a loud voice, My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? Then Jesus uttered another loud cry and breathed his last. When the Roman officer who stood facing him saw how he had died, he exclaimed, this man truly was the Son of God. As the evening approached, Joseph of Arimathea took a risk and went to Pilate and asked for Jesus' body. Pilate couldn't believe Jesus was already dead, so he called for the Roman officer and asked if he had died yet. The officer confirmed that Jesus was dead, so Pilate told Joseph he could have the body. Joseph bought a long sheet of linen cloth, then he took Jesus' body down from the cross, wrapped it in the cloth and laid it in the tomb that had been carved out of rock. Then he rolled a stone in front of the entrance. Saturday evening when the Sabbath ended, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Salome went out and purchased burial spices so they could anoint Jesus' body. Very early on Sunday morning, just as sunrise, they went to the tomb. On the way, they were asking each other, Who will roll the stone away for us from the entrance to the tomb? But as they arrived, they looked up and saw the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled aside. When they entered the tomb, they saw a young man clothed in white robes sitting on the right side. The women were shocked. 
but the angel said, Don't be alarmed. You're looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He isn't here. He is risen from the dead. Look, this is where they laid his body. Now go, tell the disciples, including Peter, that Jesus is going ahead of you to Galilee. You will see him there, just as he told you before he died. Two men from Emmaus told their story of how Jesus had appeared to them as they were walking along the road, and how they had recognized him as they were breaking the bread. And just as they were traveling downward, Jesus himself was suddenly standing there among them. Please be with you, he said. But the whole group was startled and frightened, thinking they were seeing a ghost. Why are you frightened, he asked. Why are your hearts filled with doubt? Look at my hands, look at my feet. You can see it's really me. Touch me, make sure I'm not a ghost. Because ghosts don't have bodies, as you see that I do. And as he spoke, he showed them his hands and his feet. Then he said, When I was with you before, I told you everything written about me, the law of Moses, and the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. He opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said, Yes, it was written long ago that the Messiah would suffer and die, and rise from the dead on the third day. It was also written that this message would be proclaimed in the authority of his name to all nations beginning in Jerusalem. There is forgiveness of sins for all who repent. You are witnesses of these things. And now I will send the Holy Spirit just as my Father promised. Then Jesus led them to Bethany and lifted his hands to heaven. He blessed them. While he was blessing them, he left them and was taken up to heaven. So they worshipped him and then returned to Jerusalem filled with great joy. And they spent all their time in the temple praising God.